So I'm going to come at you with a question. We've been getting this one uh, for a couple of months now, haven't gotten around to it. It's been on our list. So several people have asked it, more than I'm going to mention, but I'll call out Robert J. Barnowski, Eric Stubbs, and Elliot McFadden for recently asking this one at least. What are the difference, differences between woolen wool, worsted wool, and in the grease wool? Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with woolen wool and worsted wool. Woolen wool... The first time I heard the phrasing, like way back when, I thought like, oh, that's just a BS term. That can't be real. It is a real term. Wool and wool is an actual thing. Um, wool and wool is designed to be a little bit, for lack of a better term, puffier and include more air in the way that it's uh, uh, spun and then woven. So an example of something that's wool and wool might be like an army blanket or a, 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 a pea coat or something like that. Um, where it's the the air that is included in how uh, how puffy the individual strands of yarn are is an insulative property. <clears throat> Worsted wool, on the other hand, has very, very long straight fibers that are very, very tightly bound together in a straight fashion, and it's very, very densely woven. It is not designed for insulative properties. There's not really air pockets that are in the individual yarns, <clears throat> but it is better for suits or kilts or garments of clothing that are a, a nice garment of clothing that don't need Smooth. an insulated property. Exactly. A hard, hard finish, if you will. Now, it it starts, wool and wool or, or worsted wool essentially start with, or they could start with the same fibers. It really boils down to the way that the fibers are straightened out or do you have like paddle, you know, paddle carters, which are like two paddles where you actually do this. Essentially, in your mind, think of like the, the thing you use to, to, uh, to comb your cat, to pull the excess hair off of your cat. Two of those, which you go back and forth. <clears throat> or is it a drum carter, which is essentially a drum with a bunch of little spikes coming out in all directions. And you actually spin it around and it just kind of straightens the fibers as they go into it. Or is it combed? And combs are like big metal spikes that hold, you know, chunks of wool here. And then you actually, you know, go like this. You bat at it with another set of spikes. And then once it's all on this one, then you go sideways. And then it goes back to this one. And you're just basically straightening all the fibers. The next step is when you take the roving or like the, the puffy ball, if you will, or strip of yarn, or not of yarn, check that, of hair that you have, <clears throat> you take that and when you go to spin it, um, if it is a short distance, a sh um, what's the terminology, Mac? Um, short, not short spinning. Um, short spin versus long spin, is that what it is? Um, short spin is you're dealing with a small amount and you're just pulling here and it's it's going right onto the spindle, so you're, you're dealing a short length versus a long where you're actually pulling it all the way out and it's actually twisting it. That is gonna give you little tiny hairs. The, the long one is gonna give you little tiny hairs kind of sticking out versus a short one, which is going to keep it very, very tight and very focused. So that is gonna be better for worsted wool because it's tight and focused versus ones that have all the little hairs sticking out all the way down, which is gonna be a little fluffier, a little airier. It's gonna be better for woolen wool. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that jive, Mac? Are you in the shot or no? Um, does that jive with what you've... I am now. <laughs> there you are. Um, does that jive with what you know of worsted yeah, wool that's... versus wool and wool? Yeah, the, it just, it's, yeah, the, the airiness, the light and fluffiness of it mm -hmm. is the yeah. key. Now, let's touch quickly on In the Grease. In the Grease basically is talking about the lanolin that's actually in the fibers themselves. So... If it's in the grease, it means that it's not the 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 lanolin, the the oils that are in the hair from the sheep have not purposefully been stripped all the way out. So you wash wool because you know sheep are you know running around the fields. They get sticks in there, bugs, all kinds of stuff. That's the most pleasant of it. I'm exactly, sure. a lot of dirt. <laughs> so you do have to wash that stuff out generally before you spin it. However, it's you don't want to wash all of it out because that helps. Um, maintain the lanolin levels in the in the actual yarn um if it's in the grease it means that it's the lanolin has not been washed out of either 
the hair or the yarn if you've already done it or the finished woven fabric. If it is not in the grease, it means you've actually pulled and, you know, and stripped the lanolin out. Um, and there are different reasons why you wanna leave it in or take it out depending on what you are doing with the finished cloth. Um, Mac, you said something about your your parents or your mom used to do that stuff and she would leave it in. Yeah, we'd wash it to at least get some some of the filth as it was yeah. out out of it. Because um, as you say, it's they're picking up all kinds of stuff and you just you know as you're as you're spinning it or as she was spinning it, you know it's it, it, the more it's in the grease because you can you can literally spin right off she like pull right off the sheep and. Cut it. You don't spin. pull their hair. But it, it's <laughs> like, like the problem is it starts gunking things up. The more lanolin that's in it, it's going yeah, to gunk up the equipment oil. more. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's that lanolin's used. Can you can put the lanolin back into it as well? You can add it in. So, and that's used for so many other properties as well. Yep. But, Does anybody yeah. use lanolin for like their own hair products or any other thing like that? Or you really moisturizer. Through? Oh, moisturizer, yeah, uh, lip balm, the elbows, get rid of that, you know, crustiness. Yeah, yeah. mustache wax. You know, okay. you can use it all for that type of stuff. So, yeah, in baseball mitts. I'm yeah. learning things here today. <laughs> now, for a so that's in the grease. Now, for a kilt, specifically, you want to look for. Generally speaking, you want to look for worsted wool fabric. You don't want to have uh, uh, woolen wool because because it has more airy insulative insulative properties. It ends up being hotter when you're wearing it. And because it's puffier type fabric, it doesn't take a crease yeah. nearly as well. Yeah. So your your the pleats on the back of the kilt are gonna end up just kind of being like rolled and just kind of limp after you wear it for a little while versus being nice crisp pleats that are gonna stay in their shape as you kind of wander about throughout the day. Any thoughts on woolen wool versus worsted wool kilts? Why? Anyone would buy a woolen wool one? They're going to be less expensive. The materials are not quite as processed. Yeah. The, 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 the material itself is less expensive. And that might be where you can get into a, a less expensive kilt. But, yeah, it's yeah. just not going to hold the pleat like you said. Yeah. Agreed. Now, I think someone <laughs> uh, uses the term, like, homespun or something like that. Um, <clears throat> I don't think – I think the term is misleading because it's not really – and I don't know who it is, for the record. Um, but I've heard customers say, like, oh, what about this company? They do homespun. And it's not homespun because it's not a little old lady sitting there spinning the actual yarn and then doing it on their own loom. If it was, it would be exorbitantly expensive because it's a more, much, much more manual process, not a, a commercial process. Um, so I think it's a little bit misleading, but it's, it's meant to kind of... As, as a marketing thing, um, talk about that it's going to be imperfect. There may be some slubs. There may be some knots in the fabric. Um, and to kind of prepare people that it's not going to be quite perfect because it's homespun. Um, that's that's all I would really probably say about that. Any other thoughts? That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. That's, that's all I have to say about that. Right where I was Pull going. Pull my car <laughs> <out>. exactly. <clears throat> no, but it's, yeah, there's a good... Um, it's a good question. You know, wool and wool. Again, it sounds it sounds like a fake name, but it's not. Wool and wool is a thing. More insulative properties. It is good for certain things. It is less good for other things. It is good for pea coats and things that you need to keep warm. It is less good for finished, tailored, you know, kilts, suits, that kind of thing. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it at least a little bit educational, if not entertaining. If you want to check out other videos we've done on tartans and cloth in general, check out these videos over here.